With Bob playing leader, the boys begin to break the locks of cabinets that contain materials belonging to other groups. boys ransack the cupboard. The objects the boys are throwing, chewing and trampling on are lumps of sugar they found in one of the cabinets. All this time the therapist does not interfere but keeps careful watch against the danger of injury to the boys. However, having become convinced that the excitement will not abate by itself, the therapist has decided this is one case where he must tell the children to go home. The destructiveness we have witnessed is a natural phase in the development of the group, a part of the therapeutic process. If the group is properly balanced, such behavior should disappear in later sessions. But the degree of destructiveness in this case makes us suspect that this group is not properly balanced and some changes will have to be made. Regularly, Supervision conferences are held to discuss both group dynamics and the development of each child. At this conference, the group balance is analyzed. It's decided to remove Robert, who is the real focus of infection, and replace him with Jack, age 10, brilliant but extremely withdrawn and effeminate. Diagnosis, compulsive neurosis. One of his idiosyncrasies is that he spends hours drawing maps of the city transportation system. Henry's favorite occupation for some weeks has been playing table tennis with a therapist. The therapist's support and Henry's testing of the reality of group living have diminished his fears. Henry is now also able to share the game with another boy. Despite his original terror of children, he now accepts quite freely direct physical contact. But the gleeful manner in which he expresses his joy reveals his basic infantile character. Henry and Morton now turn to playing tag. Henry is free and spontaneous, so different from the Henry we knew at the first session. do not seem annoyed by all this, again demonstrating the group's tolerance.
Bob stays close to the therapist because his disturbing actions in recent sessions brought the wrath of the group upon him. Being afraid, he seeks the therapist's support. He has also brought a friend, the boy at the vice, for additional security. Albert's oscillatory movement behind the new, effeminate boy, Jack, and his use of the ruler is significant in view of the original problems for which he was referred. Despite the therapist's efforts to withdraw from the group's activities, the boys repeatedly involve him. At this stage, this can be interpreted as positive transference rather than mere dependence. Again, we see Henry make a social contact with relative ease and with a stranger. Now what's this? More <laughs> the boy cooking the Frankfurters and setting the stage for refreshments, a task previously carried out by the therapist. The assurance and promptness with which they enter into the activity reveal their security and growth. The therapist deliberately remains apart from the group. Henry has made a list of the boys present and checks off their names as he serves them. A great deal of conversation enlivens the refreshment table. Among other things, the boys, on their own initiative, plan a trip. We all got to be there Saturday at 10 o'clock. No. Where? The Yankee Stadium? Gate 16. Where? Gate 11. Gate 11. That's the bleachers. Yeah, and that's where, the, where um, when you go to the PIL, that's where all the PIL. So we have to meet so up at 11. So we'll wait out that pole in front of gate 11. Is that yeah, well, I don't know what's in on it. Neither do I. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. Let's, oh, no. Let's go to our house. Yeah. Albert now cuts wood and is less effeminate. It is significant also that Albert, for the first time, has taken to wearing dungarees. Yeah. Fine, oh. 
Bob, the third boy from the left, is no longer distractible. He concentrates on the job at hand. For a time, he was afraid of the others, but is now free and spontaneous with them. As Albert comes forward, we note his more vigorous bearing and manner. As he helps another boy, he further demonstrates his growing power and self-assurance. As for Henry, he now cooperates with Morton setting type on a printing project. The therapist's neutral role does not vary. If anything, he withdraws even more from the group. Jack starts a fire with the electric plate used for cooking. Rather than forbid this interest, the therapist has previously placed an asbestos pad under the electric plate for safety. After a while, Bob and Henry join in. For Henry, this is a desirable development. remains watchful and ready to intervene, but only if absolutely necessary. Soon the boys, on their own, take steps to prevent the fire from spreading. One boy rakes the fire onto the asbestos pad. Another pulls out the electric plug. Albert is now able to stand up against Bob, the most aggressive boy. Later in the session, Henry also has the courage to challenge Bob. Despite the interference, Bob continues to concentrate on his work. period, the boys again plan a trip on their own, and for the first time, take a vote 
to decide where to go. children use profanity. test the boys' frustration tolerance, but they were not disturbed by the delay. Well, next time you come, get snow, will you? Yeah. What? You know, snow. This man, I no. lived on here for two no. no. weeks. What's snow with you? What? What's snow? What's snow with you? Ah, that's a joke. to tell a profane joke in the presence of a therapist. This is the ultimate test to which children submit a therapist. It is this consistent acceptance of all types of self-expression by the children that lies at the core of a therapeutic process in activity group therapy. I get it, but would you see if there's any soap down there? Yeah, it's good. No? Don't let him get out. I don't get it. I don't get it. I get it, but I don't Bob went a little too far, and the boys decide to wash his mouth with soap. The boys strike a bargain. If Bob will bring firecrackers to the next session, they'll let him off without the oral cleansing. and outings give the boys an opportunity to continue in their masculine identification through participation in typical boys' activities. The opportunity is also provided to match themselves against one another and accept the reality of their strengths or weaknesses. The competitive factor, however, is underplayed. 
neither success nor failure evokes special comment from the therapist or the children. Bob's restlessness has completely disappeared. His tidiness is in sharp contrast with his earlier disheveled appearance and is particularly significant in view of his refusal to bathe when he reports that he no longer has temper tantrums. He no longer wets his bed, does not resist attending school and does his homework unassisted. He now has friends and when last seen the mother said, for the first time in my life I am enjoying Bobby as a son. She further suggested that in view of Bob's improvement, treatment would no longer be necessary. Bob has been treated exclusively in activity group therapy. The satisfaction of Bob's social hunger, coupled with the therapist's calm, accepting attitude and the restraining action of the group, have served to strengthen his ego and his self-control. Albert's physical bearing and coordination, too, present a contrast to the feminine demeanor displayed at the first session. The fact that he repeatedly works with a hard, resistive material such as wood further reveals a fundamental character change. Albert's mother reports that he no longer plays with girls and has given up his interest in housework. He now associates with boys. Albert's inordinate attachment to his mother has decreased and the school reports that he works up to capacity. Like Bob, Albert has been treated exclusively through group therapy. The group provided Albert with models for masculine identification and a testing ground for his masculine drives that proved adequate and supportive. Bob now applies himself industriously to a painting, which could be interpreted as a portrait of his former self. There is a striking resemblance in the expression on Bob's face at this moment and the imp he has drawn. A while later, Bob blots out the imp. One might ask, is Bob blotting out his former self? As for Henry, it is clear that he is neither moping nor withdrawn as at the start. He is purposeful and confident. Henry no longer avoids children and his bearing is erect in contrast to his former stooping posture. Henry's mother reports that he belongs to a baseball club and has friends who visit him at home. He is much less dependent on his mother and no longer follows her about. Henry's withdrawal and defiance at school have also disappeared. Henry, too, was treated exclusively in activity group therapy. The support supplied Henry by the therapist and the consistent group acceptance of his emerging powers broke through his defensive withdrawal, enabling him to develop the courage to deal with reality. Later, Henry plays checkers with Bob. The decrease in Bob's hyperactivity and the increase in Henry's animation have brought these two boys to a common level. This leveling off is one of the basic aims of activity group therapy. Good. 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 Good.
my men surround them in such a way, but I can't do anything with them. Well, the and draw, you can't keep them going back and forth. Wouldn't that be a draw? The draw is when you both can see that the game can't be won by either one. Right? I know, so that's a draw. It can be won. Of course, what can I say that? Can be won. You saw you had a purpose. You don't know how to play things. You can do that good. I've had a pretty many of them. The calm and orderly atmosphere of the group, epitomized during the refreshment period, reflects emotional growth and inner control. Each boy's ego has been strengthened and his self-esteem built up through experience with actual situations and interaction with the others in the presence of an accepting substitute parent. The change in each boy, however, has been gradual, almost imperceptible. Take Albert, for example. When we first saw him, his movements and actions were markedly effeminate. By the 18th session, a slight increase in masculinity could be observed. In succeeding sessions, Albert took to wearing dungarees and engaged in boys' work with his hands. He overcame his timidity to an extent that he was able to stand up against aggression. And in this session, Albert's physical bearing and coordination are in full evidence. As for Bob, in early sessions his hyperactivity and distractibility were sharply displayed. He acted out his aggressiveness and hostility, reaching a peak of destructiveness. Then Bob changed to withdrawal and for a while seemed afraid of the group. But in time, Bob developed freer relations and ease, as well as control, enabling him to concentrate on his projects. And in this session, Bob is a tidy, calm, controlled individual. As we saw, the other boys have to varying degrees also made progress. Jack, originally completely isolated and morose, can now laugh spontaneously. Mortimer, once timid and restless, now has more confidence and control. David, originally very withdrawn, has developed a certain amount of ease in group relations. Finally, there is Henry, who was so fearful and never played with children. At first, he stood frozen in a corner, his mouth twitching, isolated. Then, gradually, he began to move about the room, still anxious and making no contact with the other boys. In later sessions, Henry took part in play. His twitch disappeared, but he still acted out his joy in an infantile manner. Soon, he was able to assume the responsibility of serving the refreshments. In time, he joined in projects with other boys and developed to the point where he dared interfere with the activity of an aggressive boy like Bob. Finally, we see him a more mature, confident individual. And thus, towards the end of the 65th session, a considerably changed group of boys sits at the refreshment table. Each now is more prepared to face life on his own, to cope with the stresses and strains of modern living. Each now has a better chance to develop into a happy, constructive adult and fruitful citizen of the community.